Today we're going to be talking about the importance of timing. Stay tuned traders, we'll be right back. Good day traders, I'm Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. It's Thursday. We had some big days over the last few days on the British pound crosses and some of the euro pairs as well. Gold, huge moves on gold. Thank you again for filling out the survey and for all the great feedback and questions regarding the webinar and just the amount of emails I've received has been tremendous, so thank you. And again, just trying to work through the questions, addressing some simple stuff and just going over the basics every single day. I'm hoping today's video will help explain some things with relation to the timings and the importance of just understanding some of the basic concepts that we've covered previously. I know people keep saying, well, where do I start? How do I piece this together? There's three pushes, there's 717, 915, I'm all confused. I'm gonna try and just simplify the entire process in one timeline throughout the 24 hour cycle today. And again, just coming back to the survey, some of the feedback that I got was fantastic. Um, just to give you a bit of insight, just to really focus on the simple stuff. Although I follow the British pound crosses, I'm really looking for the best setups on any instrument. So if a market is moving, so the last few weeks we've had some trends happening in the Euro, the Aussie dollar, uh, we've had some moves in the pound crosses. Realistically what I'm really looking for is the setups on the best pairs. And the reason why I started to follow the British pound pairs mainly was because consistently, day in and day out, contrary to what some people have um, led themselves to believe, there is 50 pips a day, and if not 50 pips in London and New York, there's, a, there's at least one textbook perfect setup every single day in one of those sessions out of the six pairs. Does it mean I'm gonna get them every single day? No, but there's a high probability that I'm gonna be getting part of the move on one of those pairs every single day. So, now, one of the big things to understand is that all markets will go through cycles. So although I follow the British pound crosses, we've had some tumultuous movements in global markets, comp compression patterns, and obviously some potentially big moves really brewing in a lot of instruments. They may, that may not eventuate, but I, I'm really confident that we will continue to see 50 pips a day, if not twice a day, over the next few weeks, next few months, day after day after day. We've had some just some textbook perfect trades. So coming back to that, we're going to probably talk a bit more about gold. It's an instrument that I've been following and studying and comparing the same strategies and looking at the spreads and how the timings work and everything else as well as some of the other major pairs. And some of the feedback that I got from different traders was that there is obviously some a lot of interest in following those instruments. So we will probably be taking a look at that and seeing how our strategy applies with those pairs as well. So today what we're gonna discuss is the entire 24 hour cycle and how I approach the markets and how I view them. So one of the most recurring questions is what's going through your mind as the, the markets are unfolding. What are you thinking? What are, what's, what's happening? What are you looking at on the charts? So we're gonna talk about that today. So one of the recurring things that I, I constantly go over is the Monday, Tuesday initial balance and Friday, Monday, Tuesday. And yesterday was a, a really classic example of that playing out on the Euro Yen and uh, a couple of the other British pound pairs where we were up high on day three and we had 50 and 100 pip moves coming off the highs of the week. So the Euro Yen was a breakout of a Monday, Friday, Monday, Tuesday rectangle for a, a, a big move with very little pullback whatsoever. Those are the types of trades that, that I am always hunting for. So we're going to look at those examples from yesterday after. but. Coming back to what I was saying originally, I'm not looking to try and catch every move. I'm really trying to focus on the highest probability setups. And you know, I tell myself, I wanna be buying strength and selling weakness. 
So I'm looking for pairs that set up properly that have already given me an indication that they're potentially moving in one direction. So as that day unfolds, there's a recurring three hour window that we talk about, the 12 candle window. And in my approach to the markets and what I've learned and often the hard way is that retail traders, we're following price action, we're using indicators. And what happens is that we're not really fully aware of the importance of the timings. And people go on and they Google you know, best times to trade and, and they give you this rubbish about, you know, uh, Asia, New Zealand opens up and then Sydney and Asia and then uh, when Europe opens and, and all this and the volume swells, that's all great and it sounds good but realistically I want to know what's happening and what we're going to talk about today is some of the concepts that I've talked about before, the 717, the 915, and then the importance of the 12 candle window and specifically the equities hour. So when we go into the rollover, and I'm, I don't know what who your provider is or your broker is, but when my markets roll over at 5 p.m. New York Eastern Standard Time, which is 5 a.m. in Perth for me, my spreads widen, Often there's a lot of volatility. So I've seen the spreads go out to 100 pips before on certain pairs. So typically that first few hours is not a, an area that I even look at for trading. But one of the things that I have observed, and again, whatever I'm going to share with you today is purely from my observations and my learnings. So there's two things that I look for. When I see huge ranging candles and lots of the spreads widening and it's really a volatile hour in that first hour typically to me that tells me there is no volume in the market there is there is no institutional positions holding a level so when the markets whipping up and down and they're hitting stops and wiping off orders to me that tells me there's no large players currently in the market protecting a level when I see really normal price action and tight little bars and very little change in the rollover that tells me that there's institutional money in the market holding a level either for a continuation or potentially for a reversal and they're building up order flow in one of those directions. That gets my attention. When there's a lot of wicks and a huge amount of volatility in those first few candles, I'm suspicious that they're potentially flipping the book for a reversing of a market moving back against a peak formation or uh, they're going to move the market in Asia early because they ha it, re it costs them less money because there's less orders in the market protecting those levels. So you can use your own observation to make your own decisions, but I look for those little clues each and every day as the market starts to trade out. As we head into that 7 p.m. hour, so again, all times I'm talking about are New York Eastern Standard Time. I do not know what time it is where you are. Google these times. 7 p.m. New York Eastern Standard Time is one hour prior to the 12 candle window. When I get to that hour, I want to know a few things. Where am I at in relation to the high and the low? What are my major round number levels? Am I inside a 50 pip box? Am I in a quarter level? What major round numbers, 50s or zeros, are nearby, if any. In that hour prior to the 12 candle window, does the market move? So what I, I look for is the market setting up for a stop hunt or has there already been a stop hunt occur through a high or a low? So the market may use that hour to set the market up for a sell off in the first hour of that 12 candle window or they may be moving the market into a peak formation in for one of those first two hours. So again, I, the, the numbers, the high and the low, and the timings. Now this stop hunt hour can be very important as we get into the pre-London and the pre-New York market. But often this is a great indicator, if you're looking at trading in Asia, how that hour prior to the 12 candle window has moved. So if there's no movement, then I'm expecting something to happen in that first hour. Now again, there are lots of variations to how this can unfold depending on where we're at in that weekly cycle. The Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, the Friday, Monday, Tuesday, are we up high? Are we down low? Is this a Friday reversal? All these little things 
evolve over the course of the week and over the 24 hours. So again, if there's nothing happened in that first hour prior to the 12 candle window at seven o'clock, I'm looking for something to move in that first hour. So we may be at 75 and we might move up to zero and they might sell it off in that equities hour off of the double zeros. We may go, we may, they may move it up in that pre-market hour and then in the, in the first hour of the 12 candle window, bring it back down to numbers and take off at the equities hour. So again, we're looking at peak formations, the high and the low from the previous session, round numbers, and the timings. So typically in Asia, okay, we look at this as our accumulation phase. I know many of you have, are familiar with some of these terms, but that's where the market may set the initial high and low of the day for this coming day. So obviously we have our session highs and lows or our previous day's highs and lows. And then if we're inside of those, the market may have may establish a trading range, typically 25, maybe more, 25 to 50 pips, depending on the type of day that it is in that Asian session. So as we head into that next three hour window, we can call that the gap time, the dead zone, uh, and ex they can extend it out. So if it was a Monday, we might expect to see three levels of rise where they move 50 to 75 pips because they're gonna put a peak formation in potentially for the day or for the, maybe even for the week. But again, on a normal day, that may just be a, a nice 25 pip consolidation that could be working around numbers. And we talked about median price. So we could be in the middle of a 50 pip box or we may be trading inside of round numbers, double zeros and 75. So we know our highs and lows are contained within a 25 pip box. And then we also talk about a normal stop hunt outside of that is 25 to 50 pips outside of the Asian range. If the market is trading from high to low, we could get a 25 pip stop hunt down to the low of the day and back to the high of the day as we head into the London session for a move down. Or we can get a breakout of that range for 25 to 50 pips. But just coming back to the timing, so we have our gap time. They may extend that range of our three hour high and low they may consolidate it. So we talked about they set a high and they set a low and then they pull it back inside. And people are trading inside of that, but we know that they're inside of the high and low. And that's when, just prior, when we head into the next session, all of a sudden, bang, 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 they go and they break one of those levels. They expand the range, they hit the stops, they trigger breakout orders. And that's when the market starts to become active again which is why I don't trade inside of that window. Now I've had traders say to me, if they go to the high or go to the low in that gap time, I'm taking that trade. What I wanna to emphasize to you is that you are not missing out on any trades. As this day unfolds, we may get a stop hunt or a break to a high or a low in these gap times, okay? But there's a specific reason for that. We're either gonna get a trend trade in the next 12 candle window or the reversal is imminent because they've locked in the other extreme at the high or the low for the reversal in the next equity session. And typically that will again come off of numbers. We're not gonna get into engulfments and pin hammers but I'm just explaining the timing cycle and how this day can potentially unfold. So again, there's different types of days. If we're in a trending day, we may see a very tight consolidation in that Asian session. So that three hour window prints a high and a low. It stays consolidated in that gap time. Traders are trying to trade that. It's not going anywhere. And then when we head into that next 12 candle window at 1 a.m. New York Eastern Standard Time, which is the last hour tip around that last hour of the Asian session, all of a sudden, the market starts to potentially move. So there's again a couple of scenarios. If they move this market 50 pips in Asia, all of a sudden that market may be putting in a high or a low in that one o'clock hour. So the stop hunt itself may not be outside of the range. It may actually be locking in the extreme for the reversal back in the other direction. 
this market could move 25 pips and then we get into our first hour of that 12 candle Europe London window and all of a sudden they continue that move back towards the extreme. Now if this was a consolidation, this market may start to trigger one side, breaking out of the high or breaking out of the low, as we see the range expansion start to happen. Oh, spelling error. So we got our accumulation phase, where we set our high and our low potentially for the session. Then we get into our range expansion. So the market now starts to expand or it's already moved 50, 75, so, you know, we can get different scenarios, but that's where now the market may lock in a level and go back to the other side. So if it's a tight consolidation, all of a sudden we start to break out and expand the range. When the equities hour opens, again, if we're coming off of a low or coming off of a high, we may now look to either, we talk that the equities hour in any session will either be the trap or the trade. So again, depending on where we're at in that Monday to Friday cycle, we could be up high. The equities opening hour may take us even higher as we saw yesterday, pound Aussie, pound New Zealand, taking us further into the trap or jamming us into the trap. Or if we're down low, we could be getting uh, pushed into the lows they will set a high and a low and again be working one side if they're not already doing that. So they may lock in a high or lock in a low and reverse or they may have had a breakout pullback in that first hour and a continuation for the trade in the equities hour. So again, as that 12 candle window unfolds, we will either already be in a trade or we'll be working the high or the low for the reversal or we'll have a breakout pullback and a continuation happening in that 12 candle window. Then we go into our gap time again, our three hour window. So again, we could be in the dead zone where traders are trying to trade that and they're just gonna get caught inside before they hit the stops on either side or they'll now consolidate it. So the market's made a 50 pip move maybe or a 100 pip move and all of a sudden it starts to slow down. It looks like it's going to do a measured move or it starts to reverse off of round numbers. If we're in a trend trade, that market may now pull back or are they extending the range, which is where we'll get our extended W or our extended M's. Uh, again, three pushes. So we talk, traders have asked, can you go over the three pushes? It's pretty straightforward. You can have three pushes in a leg itself. So you can three hours, we could have three hours in that gap time, three pushes to the high, we could have uh, three bursts in, in single price bars, or we can have three sessions that are working the high or the low for a reversal in that New York window. So we go into our next session. So just coming back to the whole point of this is that traders are sitting around their screen all day long looking for price, but the same repeating habits, recurring cycles happen. So I know at seven o'clock, if the market's had a massive move, I wanna come back at seven o'clock to look, is there a potential reversal happening? So have they done three pushes or is the market just fallen? What, are, what is this scenario? Is this seven to eight o'clock hour now gives me some insight as to whether or not New York's gonna go into consolidation, if it's inside of the highs and lows, or if we've had a big move and New York is just gonna pull back, or are they working up into a trend for a continuation, or are they extending into a, a bottom or a top for a reversal pattern in that three hour window? So again, if we've locked in a high or a low in that stop hunt hour, that seven o'clock stop hunt, potentially now we're gonna see a retest in that first hour and a trade in that equities hour, or we're gonna see a stop hunt in that first hour of the 12 candle window and then a trade in the equities window or are we just jamming into a high or a low for a reversal at the end of the 12 candle window. I don't typically trade at the end of the New York session but obviously there are times when the market will uh, have a big move towards that last few hours of New York. Uh, again it's typically going to be at the high or low of the week 
or maybe even into a Friday session. That's not really an area that I, I trade. My main focus is this area right here, London and New York. These same habits occur over and over and over again. And then of course we have our Monday to Friday template. So we could have, you know, we've had different examples this week. We've had markets that have worked in a trading range with three pushes. We've had markets that have made higher highs for a sell-off and we've had markets that went down into consolidation and a big trade yesterday, the Euro Yen. So every single day has a timing cycle though that behaves in this manner. Depending on where we're at in the template of the weekly cycle will also reflect how each one of these 12 candle windows behaves. The round numbers, the highs and the lows, and of course the stop hunts and the 915 which is where the, the 4 hour, the 1 hour and the 15 minute and the 1 minute all roll over together. So we've got all those multiple time frames moving and rolling over potentially at one time. Equity opens, um, 12 candle window and equity opens for a potential move, continuation or reversal with all those multiple time frames converging all at once. Now we haven't gotten into previous days, highs and lows and all that because I'm just mainly focusing on the timing. So in my mind, timing is critical. That is the most important thing. The price action will trap you into positions and I'm sure you've all been there. The, the price action will trap you into positions, especially in these gap times, unless you're at the very high or very low, but even then it can be deceiving. You'll get caught counter trending a move or getting in too early only to find out that the market comes back again when we get into our next stop hunt or pre-market hour because the market will trap volume and eventually hit the stops either in the equities hour or in that pre-market hour. So the timings are critical because if you just come back to some basic understandings, Asia, London, New York, they're going to move the markets. They need to move the markets to obviously facilitate their positions for trade, for clients, for normal uh, market flow, all these things. But the, the movement is going to happen in these timings. Yes, there's going to be other variations and timings when the market does move, but we're already going to be aware of that. So if I see that happen prior to this window or in the gap times, that just gives my thesis more credibility as I go into the next section because they've already showed me their hand in terms of either continuing a move if it's a strong trend or locking in a high or a low for a reversal if we're at the higher low of the day or the higher low of the week depending again where we're at Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. We've had some big moves uh, and we're going to have 50 pips again today. So. Just timings are really important, but you can see how all this morphs together. The bigger picture structure, are we up high in a, in a 50 pip rectangle or a 50 pip structure, a head and shoulders, three pushes, there was three peaks on the pound Swiss yesterday. Just some really um, basic geometrical structures that we can then put potentially identify for measured moves, for, for range expansions, but then we look at the high and low of the day. The timings, the round numbers, okay, that all coincides over the course of the day. This all has, as I've talked about, it's an evolving organism, but it's all tied in together. And then of course, how price behaves when it gets to the highs and lows, at the numbers, at the timings, is what's the most important because that confirms that we're we're either going to be in a trend move has it been trending already is it locking in a high or a low each one of these sessions by the end of the 24 hours one of them is going to be the high one of them is going to be the low and that's basically what I'm looking for so I want the market to show me their hand I want to be trying to trade with the underlying uh, strong theme so again I'm looking to buy strength or sell weakness. I'm not just randomly trying to trade the same instrument every single day. If you're trying to trade the same instrument every single day, you're going to get whipsawed. You're going to get um, frustrated because there's going to be days where that instrument doesn't particularly trade as well. You might be trading 
the U a U.S. cross, but the cross, but the cross um, pairs are moving better. So maybe pound yen was the one to trade today, and not the pound, or the euro yen, and not and not the yen, the pound, uh, the pound yen. Uh, so that's why I talk about I follow the six pairs, and sometimes if I look, if I think the pound yen is looking really strong, I may just look at the euro yen to see if it's a cleaner chart or if that pair has been moving a little bit better. I'm looking for the easy stuff, the path of least resistance, and I'm looking for the basic strong setups as the day evolves. If something looks really messy or if the pairs are looking messy, I will glance at, at the euro crosses or maybe I'll take 15 minutes and scan the US majors. Maybe the US Swiss franc is actually selling off better because of the US dollar. I'm not sure. But what I am looking for is stuff that I can easily identify and then I go back to my timings. If I think I've missed a move or there's been a big trade, guess what time I'm coming back to look to see how the market handles that seven o'clock hour because I know there's going to be a pullback or a stop hunt into a trend for a reversal or there's going to be three pushes into a low or into a high for a stop hunt back or potentially maybe we've had a consolidation day where they're working the low or the high of all three sessions for a reversal in New York. But I'm looking for the easy trades to recognize. If I don't see something easy, I already know that the chances of me getting a decent trade or anything that's going to move get less and less and less. And the more you, you try to trade low probability opportunities, the more likely you're going to be handing money over to the market. So keep it simple traders. The timings are critical. This cycle is a, is a basic sort of outline. There's Obviously there's going to be variations. Anything is possible. But this is sort of the formula in my head every single day that I'm running through and I'm talking about gap times, dead zones, not getting caught in consolidated markets, looking for the simple stuff, keeping it very, very uh, straightforward and simple traders. So we'll look at some examples from yesterday, uh, just some textbook uh, trading setups again that follow the criteria in terms of structure, high and low of the day, timings, round numbers, engulfments, pin hammers. So have a great trading session. Uh, I've had a ton of traders email me yesterday. It was a big day for some of the traders. And, uh, you know, again, we're probably going to get 50 pips again today. So keep it simple. Have a great trading session. Again, thank you for hitting the like button. And may the markets go with Good day, traders. Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. Continuing our discussion, looking at some examples of the timings in the 24-hour cycle. And just taking that information and using it as a basic template each day, understanding that uh, you know, in this set, that hour prior to the 12 candle window, there may be a stop hunt or movement that starts to initiate uh, a direction either back, you know, against the trend. If it's in Asia, maybe potentially expanding the range uh, or initiating a move or a stop hunt. And then again, that pre market hour before the equity session opens to again similar expand a range stop hunt going into round numbers at the high or the low or or painting a new high and low as the equity hours opens uh, you know just we're going to go through some basic concepts but the timings are key um, understanding that uh, after they make a move potentially in Asia they may pull it back and consolidate it in that gap time or extend the range out and the importance of uh, knowing that in that hour prior to the next 12 candle window, they may be at a high or a low and may look to lock in that, that level as the extreme potentially for the session to work into it for a move in the opposite direction or to pull back and continue with a trend. So timings are the key, the high and the low, the average daily range, the round numbers, specifically 50s and zeros. Uh, and knowing the importance of that 50 pip box and then how price behaves when it gets to those levels. So we'll just run through a few examples, most specifically today, focusing and understanding the, the importance of timings. Uh, that helps to alleviate the perception that you're missing out on trades, that you need to get in early, uh, that you've missed a move, all these sorts of things that uh, why, and really big things psychologically to understand is that why indicators work sometimes and other times why they don't because all of a sudden the market's trending and then the next 12 candle window starts and and all of a sudden the market moves 50 pips in the opposite direction into an indicator's 
direction of bias. So looking at the pound New Zealand, we're just going to zoom through and again, the blue is Asia, the pink is the Europe London session, and the yellow is New York. The three hour window, uh, 8 to 11 p.m., 2 to 5 a.m., and 8 to 11 a.m. New York Eastern Standard Time. So just looking at this week, actually we'll just um, flatten that out so we can see our pink line for Monday. So Friday, the market rolls over into the weekend, and I mentioned that when there's wicks and big candles, <clears throat> my spreads in particular widen quite a bit. Uh, this is just my observation, but when this type of movement happens, and there's and, you know, and you can't see that on the chart, but the spreads would have been 20 to 30 pips or more at this time in that first hour. When there's very little um, normal price action, to me that perception is is there's very th very thin, and they can move the market, hit stops, and it doesn't cost them much money because the the orders are sporadic throughout here, uh, as opposed to possibly a really tight. Uh, normal price, maybe a little bit of a wick, but normal price action to me would indicate that there potentially may be larger players holding on to this or protecting this level uh, for a reason, either a reversal or a continuation into the next day. So those types of behaviors in the rollover can give us some valuable insight potentially if a market is, uh, again, the, the move, the, if there's a uh, money behind the next move or if they're protecting a level or whatnot as opposed to seeing these large wicks which again this the money may come into the market on a Monday I uh, may not have sat in over the weekend but again just heading into each day it helps me have a clearer picture potentially maybe if and sometimes it doesn't but coming back to timing so this blue box is our three hour window we see a little bump up above the numbers in that pre-market hour. Then the market comes down and stop hunts into the numbers with some pins across the 75 level before the 12 candle window starts with an engulfment and then pin hammer for a 25 pip move to the high. Then we see the creeping trend where the market puts a high of the day in place in that three hour window. And then the market stays in consolidation inside of that into the next three hour gap time. So, Again, the importance of if, if you are trading in these times to understand, again, that if you're inside, uh, potentially, um, again, you want to sort of be trading with the trend if there is one. But often this can be a an area where this can chop traders up. They work their way down and pull it up off the numbers before doing a second hit to the low of the day and to the numbers pin hammer for the move back up. So again, the timings, they made a high and a low in Asia. Then they made a uh, low of the day and eventually a high of the day in the London 12 candle window. So the equities hour dragged the markets higher. And then we see a 25 pip stop hunt back down to the round numbers. And then in the gap time, they pull it back into the high. So no extension of the range, the high and the low is in place, but they, Europe London has expanded that range. And then we get the stop hunt back down inside of the box. So heading into our next 12 candle window, we have a high, we have a low, and that pre-market hour, there's no real stop hunt. They move it up into the numbers. We're at the previous day's high. And then that first market, the pre-market hour, hits it a second time, pulls it back, the equities hour opens, hits it a third time before reversing. So again, the market pulls back into consolidation in the gap time, pulls back into consolidation in the gap time. Our 12 candle window opens low at the low of the day. Our 12 candle window opens towards the low of the day after three pushes. They attempt to extend that range in the second three hour gap. They, they hit the highest second time for the sell-off. And again, I mentioned I don't particularly trade uh, the U.S. session this late, but again, they hit the, the high a second time and then pulled it back into consolidation. So point I'm making, you can go and check any of your charts. The timings are key. So traders missed, they say, oh, I missed the 50 pip move here. Um, but keep coming back that one hour prior to the 12 candle window. What's transpired since then? Are we at the high or the low? Has there been a stop hunt? And again, understanding that a stop hunt is a move potentially back into a profitable trade. It doesn't have to be necessarily 
a, a hit to the high or to the low. This trade was in profit. They've come back down. They've hit it a second time on traders that have chased the long in the dead zone. So again, the dead zone, the gap time. This can potentially trap traders in an area where it may not move. It may look like it's going to move, and then all of a sudden, the 12 candle window is about to start, and they come back all of a sudden against you, hit it a third time, and then shift the market away. The next day, again, identifying we're inside of round numbers. So we're inside of a 50 pip box. Median price is the 25 level. The market moves in the rollover time. Just uh, there is activity, I should say. They pull it down, and then in that pre market and equities hour opening, they hit the inside highs of that consolidation before dropping that again down 50 some pips but asia three hour window we get a high and eventually we get a low we get a low of the day and a high of the day in place in the gap time they come back through the low extended another 50 pips so we're again we're at the bottom of a 50 pip box heading into the last hour of asia in that pre-market hour we get an engulfment at the low and as we head into the uh, Europe London 12 candle window, we're at the bottom pretty much of a 100 pip movement. So at the next quarter level, we get the engulfment and the market in the pre-market, one, two, three up. So it's a stop hunt into traders that are short before pulling back and pinning into the breakout and then a one, two, three to the upper part of the box. So timings. This is a, a, a 50 pip st pullback stop hunt into the move down. We get our little tweezer railroad track pin hammer inside off the numbers. Some traders have shorted this and again, there's a one, two, three. Anytime you see one, two, three, you have to be prepared for that market to be either reversing, uh, going to break even, taking money off the table, whatever that may be, but we get a breakout pullback off the numbers. And again, that's the breakout. The breakout in Europe open was back up into the move down. So the breakout wasn't an extension down. It was a move up into the move, breakout pullback. The initial move in Asia was uh, almost a breakout pullback into the high. So the opposite effect. Our low is in place, the anchor point, are in, in this particular example, the anchor point is up high. Breakout pullback, and then in our gap time, which was just outside of the 12 candle window, so they used the 12 candle window to paint the structure before doing a measured move of that, hitting the highs, going to the previous day's low, then pulling it back into consolidation. The 7 o'clock stop hunt pre-market is back up into the high, so we see the 1, 2, 3 up, and then the one, two, three down engulfment at the round numbers. That market again moves up before pulling back. So we have a structure potentially in place. The market engulfs and moves back aggressively. And there's our one, two, three to the high instead of breaking through, which again, coming back to ADR, this is 150 pip day. So obviously at this stage, if you were trading the end of that U.S. session, you'd have to be aware that the ADR, ADR has been met or exceeded for this particular pair. And again, in our gap time, it pulls back and goes into consolidation. So if you take a look at this, also you'll see this Asian range initially started off just basically as a 50 pip box. They dropped it down 50. They pulled it back inside and then moved it up 50. 50 down. 50 up, pulled back into consolidation. In the rollover time, we don't see a lot of wicks or huge candles. There's a little rollover candle before they pull it back up in three pushes, one push, two push, three pushes. And then they hit the numbers, one push, two push, three pushes, 25 pips sell off. So again, the pre-market hour, uh, no ability to push through the numbers they engulf it they come back for a second hit traders sell off at the opening hour in anticipation that this may be a double top m formation it gets down to the round numbers again double zeros acting significant this is pre this is a pre 
um, New Zealand rate announcement. So again, I don't get in front of the news, but this is a great example of how they use the pre-market to trap traders shorting this market into the news for the big spike through the high of the day. So coming back to waiting, now we wait for the news. If I was new, every month this particular announcement moves the market, but we come back and we redraw our high and low and market uh, gives somewhat of a peak formation, not really, but gives us a low, then it pushes higher, and then if we redrew our high up top, just on the hit to the previous day's high level and a pullback, we then see we get a consolidation that the market breaks out of, pulls back, hits it again, pulls back, continues that move, so they've moved off of the uh, double zeros, up 25, pulled it back, hit it again, pulled it back, and continued up for the second 25. And again, we're on day three, level three, potentially. Big wick to the high, traders chasing possibly the stop punt to the high of the announcement candle. Market moves up, breaks out, pulls back, hits it again, pulls back, hits it a third time. We have our middle structure at the end of the 12 candle window for our M formation. So again, Asia gives us a high and a low and uh, double zeros potentially uh, significant. They, this wick could be construed as a, a stop hunt. The market continued to work back up into that level before giving us our double top formation into the round numbers and then breaking through with the pseudo engulfment and then the breakout candle. And this market, if we were to there's two ways to measure this. We could just go number to number for a, potentially a full range expansion, which again, the ADR would be outside of that range. But if we just measure the structure from the high and low, we could potentially get a level. Again, uh, even just looking at numbers, 50 pip box, 100 pip move outside of the box, which would have took us down to the 9,800 level. But timings, critical. Day three, three pushes to the high, double top formation, breakout pullback on the way down. The stop hunt was back up into the move with one push, two push, and then the engulfment just prior to the US 12 candle window. So the gap time, the seven o'clock stop hunt, was move a move into the trend, into the the initial break down, and again we're at the high of the week. Market drops down inside, gives a pin hammer. There was a U.S. news at this particular time last night um, with the pin bar. And then after the news, traders could have continued that move if they weren't already in for the uh, measured move down. Timings of the U.S. session, 12 candle window, extends the range out, putting a low of the day in place for pulling back, pulling back, and pulling into consolidation heading into today's session. So important, again, the timings, uh, pre-market, the hour 717, the one hour prior to each 12 candle window, the gap times, uh, you know, again, if you're not in a trade, uh, potentially be aware that that hour prior, we could see a move, a stop into the higher to the lower into an existing move from a peak formation. And then knowing that Potentially in those dead zones, uh, they could be pulling it back into consolidation and trapping traders on the inside. So keep it simple, traders. Again, uh, just run through those timings on your own charts. These are my observations. And again, just even on the Tuesday, Wednesday rollover, not much difference in terms of the price action. And then today as well, fairly tight, which means that these uh, levels could be significant for institutional money holding onto positions or protecting levels and in this particular case we could obviously look back in retrospect and see the market moved up and then came back and pinned into that level where peak formation lows were already in place we could possibly see this move continue back to stop on up into the move from yesterday's high so keep it simple traders timing is critical understanding that at these times or when the market will initiate a stop hunt, a consolidation, a breakout pullback, or breakout reversal. So 
Have a great trading session. Keep it simple. Timings, structure, high a day, low a day, round numbers, engulfments, and pin hammers. Keep it simple and have a great day. Hi, traders. It's Stacy Burke from Stacy Burke Trading. If you haven't done so, please head over to my website at stacyburktrading.com. I create updates on almost a daily basis, and I would love for you to receive them. Just click on the blog. If you want to enter your name and your email address, I'll send you my free audio program, The 7-Step Daily Routine for High Performance Traders. This is essential knowledge for all traders in all markets, and this is for helping traders to master the market with discipline, confidence, and a winning mindset. I appreciate all your feedback and comments. As always, traders, stay disciplined, and may the markets go with you.